hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel and another segment of don't be telling my business why are you telling my business because i can't can and i can't can and, and i can't can and i'm good at it okay well hey we back y'all and this is kind of sort of a i told you so type of situation you remember back in the day when they were filming real housewives of atlanta and portia was on the show I know y'all remember it. And you remember the whole Black Lives Matter was making a real big statement. Because so many black men, young men were getting killed. And, you know, uh, some black women. Uh, Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, and a countless host of others. But those ones that are really stuck in my mind at this time. And Portia went on a big campaign expressing how she felt the police department in every state and every global community um, were targeting um, minorities. And of course, Kenya, you know her and Portia bonded when they was pregnant. They were best buddies, trying to have their children be around each other and hopefully form a relationship as well. Or at least play dates. But you know, Candy, Candy Girl, and Cynthia Bailey, they were like, no, uh, she doing it. That's a good thing. And we're going to take part in that. Because we're black. We have black sons. Well, some of us do. And we need to protect them. We need to be out there being activists as well. But honey, baby, three, them three women, especially that one, those are the founders of the Black Lives Movement allegedly it is being told out there in those youtube streets and shout out to hustle and housewives he brought me onto this subject but i'm gonna take a different spin with it but he was the first one that i saw out there talking about this subject about the black lives matter foundation people want portia to apologize yes they saw her segment on portia family matters and what she was trying to do out there towards her ex-boyfriend trying to put him in jail saying he had assaulted them and this that and that no just putting false allegations out there allegedly and they say no more no more no more and they're distancing themselves from Portia if Portia don't call herself and make an apology now see here I have a dilemma you know, I don't really ride for Porsche anymore like I did in the past, you know. Ah, <sighs> just because some things I personally know about her now from reading her autobiography. And just how she just get down with them hands, you know what I'm saying? It's like we ought to tape her hands up when we know she's getting angry about something. Because she's going to go out there and do some foolishness. And foolish. And since she was all out here... You know, trying to say Dennis McKinley. Well, she wouldn't. But she was co-signing what her cousin was saying. That Dennis, her ex-boyfriend, ex-fiance, her baby daddy. Was at him trying to allegedly assault her cousin Stormy. Sexual harass her. Then they was on a Mexico, uh, Mexico trip. Which Dennis had named Mexico. Messy Mexico. Because Diane family was coming and he knew all about Portia's mama side of the family and how they get down. He said it's just gonna be a ball of mess, just a ball of mess. But since y'all asked my mom to come and she went on and committed saying she coming, then I had to go protect her. Cause I know how y'all get down. Cause I know how y'all had me sold up when y'all found out that I didn't want y'all to find out that I had cheated on Portia while she was pregnant. One night stand, I know it. I couldn't get my, keep my penis in my pants. I know it. I know it. I know it. But that's something they would never let go. And the thing I hate about Diane is, you sat up there in Portia's home. Y'all had dinner or lunch for him. And you were there. And Lauren was there. I don't forgot else who else was there. But y'all were clowning on Dennis. You know, telling him, you know, that y'all didn't like what he dead did. And he should have known better. You know, they the public eye figures running around here in Atlanta and you know how people talk in Atlanta we got paparazzi we got uh, bloggers here you know it's, it's just a mess and they were just putting their two cents on in on Dennis and all that and then once they beat him to the ground pretty much 
then they're gonna have a revelation where you know y'all still can be together you know we just don't want you out here in your way with dick just going here there and everywhere okay C control the dick control the penis okay can you do that so it seemed like they had a all group understanding that dennis won't be doing this no more they're gonna work on their relationship they're gonna try to be good parents they're gonna probably try to get married of course gonna sign them papers but we see now a year ahead of time uh it's not looking like it's working out because she is calling herself one to date an older gentleman who she deemed is a billionaire millionaire zillionaire who knows at this time only time we tell okay but they're looking at it from the point and i'm just guessing this is just me on the outside looking in giving the information and i'm ascertaining using my reasoning and my logic okay <sighs> They just don't like that Portia and her cousin was out there. Now, everybody had their opinions on the last little episode we saw when hands were being thrown everywhere and Poe Dennis was just being sold up, locked down, hands, you know, barred behind his back one time, one time, you know, by his sides. But <laughs> he was tied down by all these women. And everybody. And anybody that wanted to get a shot on that forehead, that back head, that throat, anything on his chest, they would have free will. They were wearing his ass out. Okay? It was all out brawl on Dennis McKinley. And I was like, well, damn. Most men, or some men, I should say, so I don't generalize or anything of that nature, they would have been popping off. They would have been smacking women upside the head. They would have been putting them in headlocks. They would have been treating them like men. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes that fight or flight thing, you just it's a normal reaction. And when somebody, <coughs> when somebody sit out there and hit you, and you ain't expecting to be hit, your reflexes go up. You see bright lights. You see red lights. You just start attacking. Is it right? No, but that's your animal instinct. That's just how I go. I like let somebody come up to you and slap you. What you gonna do? You gonna automatically get them paws out and y'all going to war. That's just a normal instinct. And the person that you know put off that first hit, you could consider um you were defending yourself, so you had to defend yourself. So the first person that swung should get the assault charge. I'm just saying, for us all over with, y'all both may be going down to the police station in your state wherever the brawl took out. I'm just saying, okay? But anyway, just going to clarify what I thought I saw when I heard about this story. Portia enlisted herself in a very, very big organization that's global. And the stance that this global organization is built upon is no justice, no peace, but in the sweet harmony of nonviolence. You could say that about the Lord Jesus Christ. You could say that about Gandhi. You could say that about Martin Luther King. But Portia at the time, when she was there at her family Mexico trip, she was doing by any means necessary. She was putting out that black Malcolm X party. <laughs> <laughs> that Malcolm X theory. He said, forget that nonviolence. Forget it, forget it, forget it. It's by whatever means is necessary. Okay? And then if you go biblical about it, the Lord went to war too. Remember the Egypt situation? Pharaoh would not. He said he, he lied about it. He let him go for a certain amount of time and distance. But then he reneged and he tried to get the Egyptians back. Okay? He tried to get the slaves back back he had tried to get the hebrews back on the slavery on the, his domain and the lord didn't like that and of course you saw what happened you saw how pharaoh and his army got dealt with okay that's a, a good passage that i like to use when i get around my family and some friends and they were saying no we're supposed to be non-violent we're supposed to turn the other cheek this that and third and right now i ain't gonna lie to you i'm about malcolm x style i'm about okay you're not listening we don't talk enough it's time to go to war all in favor get on this side and like i said it ain't gonna just be a black thing because um caucasians asians any other walk of life besides being black or minority part 
they're going to join in because they think it's stupid too. No man, no woman, no race, creed, or color is above any other race, creed, or color. Everybody should be equally treated and equally founded in the rooted sense of the American dream. And it's not. It never has been. And people want to, you know, slide it under the rug, slide it under the covers, make like it don't exist. And so something comes out. And they say, oh, yeah, it exists in this particular situation. Y'all remember Telsa? When that man got, um, he won so many million dollars um, for being discriminated against or harassment, you know, being called this, that, and the third in the 21st century, okay? We still have a, have a lot of dehumanizing, degrading things that happen to blacks, that happen to minorities, people of brown color, and people who are scared, they are still willing to turn that blind eye when they know it's wrong but like i said every every person has their day see i didn't call everybody a dog every person has their day and they're gonna have to be questioned on a higher authority than myself of why they did what they did okay and let the cookies fall when they lay but however going back to this little story portia knew better okay Portia knew better when she was aligning herself with such a powerful, well-known organization. And on fairness side, they had to know Portia liked to throw them bows, okay? She liked to throw them paws when things are not going right. She got to show them claws, you know what I'm saying? See, I did a little rhyme for y'all. I know I can spit like that. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Sometimes it flows, sometimes it just goes south. But anyway... These women should have known where Portia was dealing with doing in her life. If they did any kind of research, they knew she was on reality TV. They knew she had got down with Kenya. Okay? And Kenya's a black woman. Through and through. She, she did the violence. Jamie got in touch with Jamie in that alley where no cameras were feeling, fi filming. And she got them paws on her because Jamie came out and showed us her facial features. So these women, I'm calling foul on them too, and their organization, because y'all knew what y'all were dealing with when it came to Portia Williams. But I know I give it to you too. I give you a little reprieve, because you probably thought Portia had went to anger management. Portia really wasn't doing like that, that kind of stuff she did in the past, and y'all probably trying to get her a break. Because y'all know she's an affluent grandchild. Uh, the late Jose Williams and he was a part of the LLC Christian Leadership Southern Conference and he walked and talked and told the line for nonviolence. I've never known Jose now he's a drunk yes he is and he thought he was privileged to certain things out here in society from certain organizations I told y'all a story about it okay but he was not a violent man now I'm pretty sure he don't got on his brawls in the day. They probably wasn't with no white man. Probably with a black man. You know, but just how we get down. Sometimes we have to throw them bowls. You know, but it ain't on camera. It ain't, you know, for people to see. It's just probably an isolated incident. Somebody got mad because somebody had the pool stick and they were ready to play. And then they had to go crack some heads. They stand in the third in the pool hall. You know, some things like that happen. Or if somebody took the last piece of chicken at Sunday dinner and the other person was drunk. Jose probably was drunk. And things just got to happening, you know, because, you know, black men, they can eat. They have a deep stomach, okay? So, it could be a situation like that, because, you know, in family reunion, people don't get what they want. They start acting crazy. And, you know, everybody just, like, turn the other way, because they know these two are always going at it. Every barbecue, every family reunion, every Christmas holiday dinner, it's always them two. So we just don't get them no energy. We don't we don't engage in what they're doing. And soon, like kids, they'll stop. They'll get to fight, whatever. Kind of closed doors, whatever. Next time we see them, they drunk, laying on the grass somewhere. Laying up at, with each other. But it just is what it is. So now, Portia's in a very big predicament. Because they want her to erase everything that she knew about uh working with their organization going out there globally or state by state trying to protest trying to show her support going to jail walking with other participants that believed in the same activism of lives matter black lives matter you know what i'm saying but you had every color 
representing out there every age group it was a beautiful thing but you know Kenya said you know because she was still on Real Housewives of Atlanta she said uh uh that girl doing that for a storyline that girl don't care about no black line now she just didn't have no storyline this season now we gonna have to go with uh I call foul <laughs> and Portia up there in her park uh, Blue Ivy Park uh gear that I know Beyonce didn't and didn't friend her or anything. She bought that stuff. But anyway, overpriced stuff at that. But child, honey baby, Porch was out there giving a peace sign, wearing her afro, doing her public power sign. She was deep in the struggle. But lo and behold, so many, 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 many months and moons ahead of time, she up there dogging out a black man. <laughs> and I know Kenya right now, you know, somewhere laughing, just laughing, just laughing, and hoping and praying they let her back on Real Housewives of Atlanta so they can bring up all her discretions. And Portia will be the storyline for probably season 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Because they will be wearing her behind out, okay? And I wouldn't even blame them for it. You know, I wouldn't even blame Ken. They'd be like, damn, we helped you. We was in support of you because Ken has a black child that's a boy. And she knows what she's going to be confronted with while he's being raised and, and, and taught to fear, in a sense, authority. Because she don't want him dead or in the hospital or in jail. Because right now, ain't really too much change about how the blue hood get down. Now, I ain't saying all the cops are that way and they are uh trained and, and mentally poised to be that way but it does exist that certain type of racism does exist even in the blue that's supposed to protect and serve they still have a brotherhood alliance and they really don't care you know they showed us that on tv how they you know was down here uh, when we they were pro protesting in atlanta and how they were dragging um allegedly um innocent black children out that were college bound students or college going students they were dragging them out their car saying they should have been uh off the road curfew and this that and the third and um it was one that was uh, being uh profiled that uh, some two cops black cops had dragged this um black couple out a girlfriend and boyfriend they were trying to get home but the traffic was so bad they were detouring and they were just out in the midst of everything and they dragged them out and tried to put handcuffs on them and, and just that and third but i think it got dismissed uh, uh very quick fast in a hurry and i think those officers got um terminated uh for their alleged dealings with that situation and then they turned around and uh i think they did a civil lawsuit and i think the um two students won on that uh piece of um of news as well or incident that they had to go through but yeah Kane was saying it was, it was a mess she said uh -uh, i'm telling y'all there's a storyline boy she don't care just because she's hooked up with the late uh civil rights uh cohort or martin luther king and they were with the LLC and he has Jose Field the Hungry. That's just her family legacy. She don't believe in that shit. Uh-uh. She just doing that as a whatever. You know, a stunt. And you, it kind of thinks because her brother, that's her brother. Uh, that was um, Jose Williams' uh, son. He not there. I ain't never seen him with Portia. Except for maybe a few uh, family photos that Portia probably leaked out to the public. But yep, she kind of tarnished the engine that ran uh, that supported the Black Lives Matter. She was all up in there, but she didn't do anything. But caused more fake fraudulent foolish fuckery out there for the organization and then anybody else connected to Portia with that type of or, uh, organization or um, um, activism. So the, the, the alleged being out there on them streets them youtube streets says they want portia to publicly come out and apologize and i'm like what is she really coming out to apologize for uh tarnishing lightly the image that y'all put her in or uh, that y'all supported her in that y'all were down for her to be in because of her notoriety of being on real housewives of atlanta and other 
personality radio outlets such as Dish Nation, it brought a lot of awareness when you have celebrities or reality stars uh, befitting your organization because it brings them a lot more attention because of who they are and who the society and community has deemed as good trustworthy people, good stock people. So I think they just need to take it one on the chin and really going forward look at people they want to put in their organizations check their background see go a little bit further do some more organization dig up work you know how they call a vetting do that the government do it all the time when you're trying to get government jobs they vet you and if anybody don't know what vetting is that's researching you entirely from your financial portfolio from your character from your schooling uh, people you associate with your travels everything okay and the kitchen sink it's almost like you're trying to buy a house or buy you know something really big and lucrative and you haven't have to take out uh, financial loans or whatnot and they want to research in and everything girl so uh, I think it's just like a catch-22 the black line movement and the women that uh, built that foundation and stuff they should have did their due diligence but to come out and, t and say oh Portia Williams needs to come out and defend herself or she needs to come out and apologize you know I'm like all they Portia need to do is apologize to the Lord Jesus Christ if you really want to put it and repent for all her sins and her transgressions okay and try not to do it anymore going forward that's on a person that she need to really apologize for for all of her actions not these three women not their organization because like i said you knew what you were dealing with and if anybody knew anything about real housewives of atlanta or reality shows based and built on bravo true original entertainment you know what kind of poor person portia was when you were fooling with her i mean portia's like day and night she like jacqueline hyde or mrs jacqueline hyde i should say you don't ever know what you're gonna get from her and of course i'm like kenya she probably did use it as, as a good storyline because it was a good storyline and she did bring out some very pivotal points about the movement and her being an activist and being out there in the streets getting arrested going and she probably gave money to brianna taylor family and um probably other families we don't know because we're you know we're not behind the scenes just how Portia get down sometimes she does have a heart and she's she is kind of like free willy uh giving out money or or some source and that that was a good thing you know what i'm saying i don't know if her mom or dad had taught it to her or she just learned it in church and bible study i know because it's always good to give and not receive okay it is always good to give and not receive sometimes all right so if you wanted to know from me personally Dev Chanel you know, for this world i would tell them to kick rocks kick rocks with their shoes off and hopefully they feast a crusted okay so they can get a good feel hopefully it's in the winter time too because you can't come out here anybody can change you know portion ah we all need prayer on her because you got to want to change too but Portia has anger management problems. Y'all knew that too. We ain't no fool to that. We don't know. We know Portia don't got hands on people before. Only person I don't think she did put hands on was, uh, hmm, probably Cordell Stewart. Okay, and maybe some football players. You know, because they was just like, mm, they too bulk. But, you know, maybe they didn't get her enraged, therefore, to see that side of her okay but um we know she would definitely put hands on people so i say file file on the organization you know just go take that like one on the chin two on the chin one in the mouth and say my fault and don't just and don't enlist her anymore don't take her money if y'all don't want her fight okay because you might need her fight one day i ain't saying it's gonna be necessary but like Malcolm X said, it by any means necessary, if people are getting down in them streets and, you know, people are getting killed and, and done wrong, sometimes you might have to resort to violence. I don't know what this world going to come to later on. We don't never know. You might be defending your life. You might be defending your property. But, you know, you're going to be defending something is what I'm saying. That's what the law said. You better make sure they're coming for you and it's a life-threatening situation or you might be in cuffs yourself. 
So I'm just giving it to you. The law ain't on the side always to the people that's right and trying to do right. They say the criminals that's committing a crime, that's ready to break in your house. If they can't show just cause proof that that person was really trying to come into your house, they'll have your ass in handcuffs, taking you down to the nearest, uh, we call it, police station and booking your behind. Okay, until they can ascertain and get proof and, and, and say, did, did you really have the right to kill that person or shoot that person because you felt bodily harm coming to you? So, see, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a crazy society we live in and the laws that we have made for ourselves to be, um, what you, what you call it, served up to us on a platter. And we have to be defending ourselves. When we felt we didn't do anything wrong but trying to survive against another party who infringing on our rights and impeding on our rights to survive. Coming into our personal space. But I'm just saying, that's how the laws are out there that we sit and are call ourselves voting for. And then you don't even know what you're voting for until the shit don't be enlisted and indoctrinated and they don't put it as law and then you be like well that's what that wasn't uh told to us that way we you know you, you get all stupid then and i'm not saying you didn't do your due diligence and find out about the bill but they don't make the bill as clear as possible you know it's crystal crystal clear and you won't be making any wrong movements you will know what you're doing when you're doing it but like I said, this is what it is. Black lives do matter. All lives matter. But the ones that seem to be publicized a lot and infringed upon a lot are the black, brown, and minority people. Okay? So that was just a little educational video. And believe it or not, I know some of my family going to drop dead in their seats or fall out on the floor. I defended Portia. See? I told y'all. I'm not biased. I just look at what somebody give me. I sit up there and try to use the best of my reasoning, my logical, and my post-secondary education to try to figure out certain things. And I can uh, think well-rounded. I can see many perspectives, uh, uh, many viewpoints. But then I had to go with what I feel, what I experienced, and what I was shown. And I had to do my due diligence and report it as I see fit. Okay? But yeah, I don't think nobody should be coming for Portia about what she did because hey anybody that known Portia has watched Portia you know get around on these social media platforms and her own platforms of being on Real Housewives of Atlanta this nation uh she's even had some um tv little cameo shots if they still want to deal with her they gonna deal with her you know what I'm saying until they don't use her up and then hopefully she'll have some revenue some streams of income coming from somewhere don't know if it'll be with her boyfriend she got now because I'm, I'm, I'm quitting all these fiance shit it should just be boyfriend until you ready to walk down that aisle or go to the courthouse forget fiance man marry me or woman marry me or not we ain't got to go through the whole hoopla because like i said life is too short ain't no sense to be planning all these long decorated uh engagements no nah. when you put that ring on my finger we need to be getting married the next day next month okay don't need to be no long drawn out thing because we ain't living that long people go on and be with who you need to be with who you feel you need to be with and just go and get to the real deal uh just like i don't know i don't know if simon can handle porsche call but she be getting to some ooh child she be getting to some predicaments and then she be wanting to defend herself and and, and it seems like uh what her name um Simon can't seem to control her very well. <laughs> when I mean control, I'm talking about holding on to her tightly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, if in fact they do get married, he don't have to face no uh, financial charges of trying to get her to go somewhere. <laughs> or get her out of jail. I'm like, child, please, I can't take it. Y'all just too much for me. But yeah, Portia don't need to be apologizing to no political organization. They knew what she was doing. They knew how she got down. And it is what it is. I forgot what they were. They said. Uh, when you say it is what it is, it's some kind of cute word they were saying on that Mexico trip with that uh, spiritual advisor. But I'm sure you, if you all have been following, y'all know what the word was. Put it out in the comments because I might adopt that and say, <laughs> say that instead of saying it is what it is, okay? But y'all, y'all be blessed. I will see y'all next video. And put down them comments, okay? Because y'all have been coming for Auntie Mama Dale or Cousin Dale, Grandma Dale, however I how you see me. Y'all be coming for me sometimes. And I'll be like, I'll let y'all come for me because y'all fam.
But when you get too disrespectful, then I had to get in those asses and tell you what I really feel. Or what I wanted to tell you, but I was just basing it on, you know, this, that, and the third. But believe me, don't do it. Okay, let's just be peaceful with one another and, you know, toe the lines and just be respectful. Because, you know, I can get just as dog, doggone dirty and doggish like y'all can. So, and we don't want that. I mean, we can have it some days. You know, I got time some days. But we love each other. We respect each other. So, let's just dialogue together. Okay? I ain't right all the time. And y'all ain't right all the time either. Somebody got to be wrong. And somebody just be like, okay, let's agree to disagree. But just as long as we know we family, we love each other, we're going to always be tight. And we're not always going to agree. Okay, but we got to be respectful. All right? But that's all I got, fam. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.